Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your portable Pro Court basketball system with a 44 inch polycarbonate backboard. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your basketball system is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that come with the basketball system. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. There are steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two half inch wrenches, two 7 16 wrenches, two 3 16 Allen keys, which are included, a 3 8 socket, a block, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a flathead screwdriver. To make this easier, we're going to use a half inch socket, a socket adapter, a Phillips head bit, a 3 16 hex head socket, and a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. Also, depending on how you decide to fill the base of your system, you're going to need 280 pounds of sand and a funnel or a hose connected to a water source. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. It's crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Remove the rivet at the top of the top pole to separate the other poles. Once the rivet is removed, don't let the tube on the inside come out of the outer tube. If the poles become separated, slide the crimped end of the pole with the holes into the bottom of the pole with the warning label. Slide the pole inside the pole with the warning label out until it clears this hole and then insert the hardware. Slide the pole with the crimped end up until one of the holes lines up with a square hole and then insert the hardware. Make sure that the crimped end is facing the same side as the warning sticker. Slide the bottom pole into the middle pole, making sure that the hole at the bottom of the middle pole ends up with a slot at the top of the bottom pole. Into the hardware, it's normal if it spins freely. Before continuing, make sure that your assembly matches what you see in step 1.5 in the manual. For example, our knob should be on the other side of the pole, so we're going to switch that real quick. It's crucial that you complete the previous steps properly because the next step is irreversible. We're going to seat the poles together by striking the bottom pole on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. You're going to need to use some force, so be sure not to hit your toes. It's crucial that you complete this step properly, otherwise your poles could separate during use, causing serious injury or property damage. Attach the flat end of the pole brace to the base, making sure that the angled end is oriented like this. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Repeat the previous step for the other pole brace.
Slide the long axle into the bottom hole of the bottom pole. Slide the short axle into the hole just above. Add your wheels to the long axle and then your spacers. Lay the base onto the long axle, making sure that the axle rests in these notches. Then step on the base until you hear it click into place. Rotate the pole up until the short axle rests into these notches. Secure the pole braces to the pole through this hole. Now you can secure the hardware at the other end of the pole braces. Lay the pole on the ground and don't lift it back up until you have proper weight in the base. Orient your backward brackets like this and then add your U-bolt into these holes making sure it rests in these notches. Attach the backboard brackets to the crimp side of the top pole, making sure the U-bolt stays oriented like this. Be careful not to over tighten this hardware. Place the rim support over these holes on the backboard bracket. Place your backboard over the backboard bracket, making sure your U-bolt goes through the top holes. Place the rim onto the U-bolt and add the hardware. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Insert the hardware into the holes at the bottom of the rim, making sure to go through the rim support. The backboard brackets are meant to be bent by hand. Angle them out until the hole at the top lines up with the hole in the back of the backboard. Then add the hardware. Now you can tighten all the hardware on the rim and backboard. Now you can add the net to the rim. Then remove the film from the front of the backboard. Next, you're going to fill the base of your system. We've already done that, so refer to your instruction manual or click on this link here to see how to properly fill the base of your system. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime portable pro court basketball system with a 44 inch polycarbonate backboard. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.